we go, it's Ranch Ferry. Good uh, day. I have finally figured out how, didn't take a lot of work, but I've been playing with it, to take the precision adjust, or you could use the professional precision adjust from WorkSharp Tools, and sharpen the Black Hornet. Sarah Razor, this uh, will also sharpen the straight edge. It's much more straightforward because there's no interruptions, not serrations, they're interruptions. I call this the foamer. And there's been a lot of questions about how to get it sharp. One of the reasons you might want to sharpen your broadheads is to make them sharp. But obviously, uh, probably ought to shoot them before the season starts, you know, check point of impact, et cetera, like that. So if you shoot it a few times, I'm going to show you guys and gals how to sharpen the Black Hornet Sarah Razor the Foamer. Stay tuned. Okay, the first thing you need to get in your brain about about foamer chisel serrations interruptions is it is a straight edge broadhead and all they did was cut the interruptions into the head i'll get a couple of close-up pictures here but in between each interruption is flat so when you sharpen it it's essentially flat like this blade is and then it dips down and inside the dips is sharp it's only cut in on one side and i'll show you how to sharpen that i kind of figured out how to do that i also figured out how to use this gizmo or that gizmo to sharpen the bleeder blades which is a really cool thing to do parts of this are going to be relatively clunky because i'm going to be behind the camera it's not going to be awesomeness awesome but in the true sense of the Ranch Ferry, the only bow hunting channel out there that must be trying to actually teach people and help them to improve to see the process, you need to look at it up close. And so it's going to get like that. The first thing you're going to want to do is get a screwdriver and mess around with a few of the sizes. And then you'll remove, there's a screw in here. And you're just going to remove that screw and spin it out. Uh, and there we go so there's the little screw and then you'll grab the main blade you're going to take the blade out one thing i like to do just because i'm a little bit i like to put things back in the order they ran theoretically it should be a perfect blade and be on the same side and all that stuff i just put it back the way that it was in there so i just take a sharpie and i mark the front of the blade like that probably can't see that but i put a mark off the ferrule onto the blade so I know to put it back in that position. Just a little tip that I do there. So remove the blade and you're going to put that in the sharpener later. And then these little hummers, you will cut yourself if you push them with your thumb. I've tried it. So I'm going to spin the camera around and show you the best way I found to pop them out. And then one of the nuances, um, there's a little block in here that holds the bleeder blade in, the blade slides over the top, the main blade slides over the top. And it's got a little uh, soft rubber button in there. And you need to make sure that goes back in where it's supposed to go. So I'm gonna turn the camera around and we'll start the clunky part of the video where you actually learn something and become better and more lethal because your broadhead is gonna be razor sharp. And trust me, from a physiologic standpoint, every doctor on earth really, really, really sharp is more lethal. Stay tuned. Okay, I got all my gizmos here. Got all my sharpening tools. I recommend if you get the precision adjust to get the Elite model with the strop, it, it really does help and it's not that much higher of a price point. So I got the clamp and everything over here. I'm gonna move that out of the way. Screwdriver will be for later. And we're here trying to get the bleeder blade out of the Hornet. So I got my screw, got my blade, and what you do is, I have a yoga mat on my workbench, but there's the block. And I prefer to just take it like this and tilt it into something, just roll it, and it'll roll out. See how there's a space in there? It's easier that way to get it to pop out. So 
you just take it like this and I roll it and it comes right out of there. And I've tried to push it with my thumbs and you're gonna cut the snot out of yourself. Now, here's the hole I was talking about in the bleeder blade and this is up. So you need to note that, okay? See the notch? It goes like that. I'll press it back in later, but the notch is up. See, it's already so tight, it's kind of dangerous to touch on, to grab. So once again, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna roll, just roll the ferrule and it'll pop right out. And then that's up. So I'm primarily gonna focus on this edge I'm not as concerned about the back edge. You can do it the same way. I'm not gonna sharpen all four. I'm gonna sharpen the impact side. I just don't, it doesn't matter. For what we do here, do there. I'm just gonna sharpen one side of the bleeder blade and then you lather, rinse, repeat for the other sides. So we have our ferrule, we've got our block. That little button's gotta go back in that hole. And then we've got our sharpener. So we're gonna clamp the uh, blade in the jaws here. Pretty straightforward, this just opens up. Slide it in there. What I've been messing with is, so I try to align it off the corner of this right here, and then eyeball the blade to be straight. So it just gives me two points to aim at. So right about there. And then I eyeball this one straight up the edge of the clamp and that should get me pretty darn plum. You wanna sharpen the blade straight across. That's what the, this sharpener is designed to sharpen knives. So at this angle, it doesn't make a lot of sense. Obviously that's a little bit blown out, but if you put it in like it was traditionally in a broadhead like that, you're gonna be working toward the clamp and gonna hit it. You can see I've ground the clamp off. See that shiny edge right there? <laughs> that's when it's too low. So like I said, I just been going like this. I've been messing with this, tighten this up goes like that and then you push this button on the back if you haven't seen my other videos on the workshop you push this button and it just flips back and forth the camera angle is weird because the camera is aiming this way and you want to be looking down on it so it looks a little bit odd but it's not there's that I'm going to sharpen like this so I, I can't work towards the camera so I'm going to be working like that I can already see that it's not real square so I'm going to actually loosen it up a little bit You're just gonna have to do this on your own and look at it and see where it's, I'm kind of trying to plumb it off the front here and down the side. So it's pretty square. Eh, close enough for government work. This tool's so consistent. It really, really works good. I've had this, this device for going on a year. And over that, you can pull the ends of these off. You can take this piece out and pull the ends off. So you're sure as heck welcome to run through every stone in here and just work that edge down and that's fine. I have come up with, by just mix and matching them, I've got a 320, I got a 600, and then I go to ceramic and I go to a strop. Rarely does a Magnus broadhead need a 320. So I usually start on a 600 and go to ceramic and then go to leather and it works like crazy good. All right, so I'm gonna set the bevel and I'm gonna tell you what bevel to set it at. I've got it pretty close, but the acid test is a Sharpie and just Sharpie across here. Now listen, if you don't get all that Sharpie off there and there's Sharpie back and there's Sharpie back here but you got a shiny, like half of this is shiny. You know, you can keep working on it, but that's gonna be sharp. Your key is not to be sharpening back here on this side of the edge where it doesn't get on the front. It's gotta get on the edge. So if you get half a degree off, I mean, yeah, just, it's gonna be okay. Just be fine. So I'm gonna check my edge bevel and I am gonna actually use the 320 on this and very light. All I wanna do is skin it so I can see it. So it's on, 
18. So there's 20, 19, 18 over here. It's on 18 degrees. And I'm just going to skin it with a coarse stone. I'm not going to push real hard. I just want to take the Sharpie off. All right, you can see, you can see that it's a little bit high. So we need to go down because it's tilted like this. That's why it's only out on the edge. I mean, I know we're gonna go down just a tiny bit. So we're gonna go down to one more click down to 17. Okay, and then we're gonna just skin it. I'm gonna go ahead and Sharpie it. Just to be sure that I didn't go over. Remember I said if you sharpen the back of it, you're not getting anywhere either. So this is the 320 stone. The 600 would be fine. Just hand pressure. All I need to do is take the Sharpie off. We're not sharpening it. We're just setting the bevel. That's real good. You can see it's evenly taking the uh, Sharpie off. Okay. So that's about right. So 17 degrees right there. It's published on the website, but remember this tool is not made by the broadhead manufacturer and this tool is not made by any broadhead manufacturer. So it's, it, it's hit and plumb, but you need, I recommend heavily to use the Sharpie and just get it right. And then you can say, okay, take a marker or whatever. You can remember it, but I'm not very smart. So I just mark it. There we go. Gold means Magnus. There we go. I'm not going to use the 320 to sharpen this broadhead. I am going to use the 600 and then the ceramic and then we'll do the bleeder blades. So we're just going to saw it and get it nice and even. And I'm not pressing. I'm just barely pushing. Let the, let the stone do the job. Back and forth. Whoops. Wipe it off. A little bit of Sharpie got inside the interruptions, but see how shiny that got? It's sharpened. Okay. We already know we have the bevel right. So you go like that and you go to town. It's not unusual to see the... Uh, Sharpie come over the side on the blade there. No big deal. 600, okay? And if it looks like it's resetting the bevel a little bit, it probably is because it, once again, I don't have the blade perfectly square. And this does, machine is not designed for the broadhead, but once you get them set to the machine, they're done. They will never, you know, it'll always be set. So we got shiny, shiny. All right, now that that's done, I always like to wipe them off because it looks a little better. I go to ceramic. If you want to run through and do 800, etc., you can. That is perfectly fine. Whatever suits your fancy. I'm just going to leave it on this side and I'm going to go to ceramic. And I'm not pressing real hard. I'm just letting a little bit of pressure and I'm letting the stone do the work and I'm just sawing back and forth. And you want to go back and forth more than side to side. So just saw and saw and walk it across. Flip it over. Polish it real good. I'm not pressing hard and it is popping right real real polished give me a piece of paper I always check on the tip because that's a straight edge I'll tell you what the rest of its sharpness is pretty sweet yeah we're good so I don't want on piece of paper I don't want the interruptions cheating and grabbing them. I like that for soft tissue hits. I've always liked this head for that. 
but I always check the front part. That's the straight edge to check the sharpness of the straight edge. And that's pretty solid. Okay, now take that off, strop. It's got a little bit of this green compound rubbed into it. I'm gonna add some to it. This does not come with the kit. You can buy this on anywhere, sharpening supplies or whatever on the internet. And you put that in there. We left the tower at 17. No, nothing changes on a double bevel. And you're only going to go backwards. You do not saw with this or it'll eat the leather. And I like to just give it a good, you know, polish. What this does is it takes all the little bits and chunks that are at microscopic level off of there. No, you know, very, very light pressure. Ding, ding, shiny. Flip it over. Once again, I'm going to check the front. Oh, it, you have to feel it. it. It just, it's just next level. I mean, it's, it's hard to describe the difference, but just the leather strop. It's, <laughs> it was really sharp before and it's terrifyingly sharp now. Now we're going to talk about how to do the serrations. God's honest truth is I've been fighting with trying to figure out how to do the serrations and I figured out that with this thing, it's pretty easy. The serration in the curve, here's a close up of it, is actually sharp. The blade is on this side, it's like it's, it's a cut in from this angle. It's not a beveled cut. So you want to sharpen downhill a little bit. What I came up with, and I've heard about this, but I got a piece of twine and some sharpening compound you can see I got the line through it. Get this out of the way so I don't cut myself. And I just take a piece of twine. I tried braided fishing line. That didn't work. It was too small. And I go like that. And I get that compound on there. And just put my finger on it. And get some of that compound on there so it's green. Okay. And then you take your tower. And you literally dental floss it. And when you're looking at it, which you're not going to be able to see because my camera's not going to do micro or whatever, you can see the edge shine up a little bit. And that's how I do it. So now it's buffed off. The blade is super sharp and stropped. And now the, the interruptions have been touched up to get any possible bits and crumbs out of there because you want those curves sharp. Should something go down in there, most likely it will be a vital organ artery, vein, or lung tissue that could end up in one of those holes. You want that stuff razor sharp. And like I said before, it's, that means that they got like flat top chainsaw teeth that are sharp on the edges. And then there's a dip in them. And when they get into soft tissue, they tend to pop and nick and cut, but they also cut like a straight blade. So it's got some really cool features once it gets inside the animal. And it's so, so super important to sharpen broadheads. And it just took me a while to figure out how to do this, you know, efficiently and be able to show it on a video. All right, that is done. So what you would do is you would unscrew this, pull the blade out, you'd flip it over, right? This is the sharp, this is the side I sharpened. You see the shiny side. And then you would put the other side in there and repeat that process for the main blade. We're now going to work on the bleeder blade. All right, once again, I'm only going to sharpen one of the blades. There's four of them. They're all equal, equally the same size, and this is up. So I'm going to sharpen one of the actual blades that's moving on the shot line. So it's basically the same process. It's just a little tiny piece, and you got to be real careful. I'm running it right through the center of the hole that's in there. There's that hole for that little button on the block. The hole for this guy. I'm running it down the middle of that and I'm just eyeballing it to square. It's kind of tough, but that's what I'm doing. It's the best I could figure out how to do. You need to be far enough off of the clamp here to get on the edge. Snug it up, stick it in there, and once again it flips. Okay. 
I grabbed my original one, which I said once again was eight, uh, 320, 600 ceramic. And then strop. I'm gonna go like that. And it's almost as wide as the uh, block is. So this is real fast. So I'm gonna go once again to the 600, because this isn't a super dull broad head, bounce off rocks and that kind of stuff. And I'm just gonna go like that. And it is shiny right on the cutting edge. Perfect. You don't even have to move around. You just sit here and go like that. Yep. And then you flip it. It's gonna look, the cut, the grind's gonna look a little different when you do it this way, but the key is this tool is so consistent, you'll be fine. Once again, if it, gra if it changes the bevel a little bit, it's fine. You need to be sharpened on the outer edge of the blade. And this thing doesn't take a lot of work. Just stay right on it. No pressure. Shiny, shiny. Okay. I'm going to do that. Go to ceramic. And then we're going to strop it. There's no reason not to strop it. Backwards only, backwards. It's just as wide as a strop, so you just barely any pressure. Okay. There's a little bleed blade. And we are nasty. I mean, that is really, really good. So that's how you do that. So, so much for that. Don't get old because you have to wear readers to be able to see your lens, see your uh, camera. That's really great. <laughs> well, if you don't get old, then you're going to die. That's no fun. So if you get old, get some readers. But that's how we sharpen it. It really puts the edge on another level. And it'll allow you to be able to do what I said in the beginning of the video. You need to shoot your broadheads to your maximum hunting distance and get some confidence and shoot them a lot, especially when you get near season. Don't just go straight field points to broadheads. They can drop a little more. They drag a little more in the air. And at longer ranges, they might hit a little lower than you would expect. So check everything. And here's what I would do. I'd buy two packs of Magnus, one set. I would actually run through this process and I would just drop right out of the box. The other set, I would commit one or two of them to shooting and just move that one shooting broadhead. Start with one and move that shooter broadhead, practice broadhead, arrow to arrow to arrow to arrow. You're going to hit a pipe. <laughs> I have personal experience with this. Like on 3D targets, you'll hit a little low and there's a pipe in there that you're supposed to put the stakes in and it it chews up blades. It's hard on broadheads. Broadheads aren't meant to penetrate steel. So if you bend one, break one, hey, he has a great warranty, lifetime warranty. So if you do hit the leg and you want to send it in for warranty, I know he'll send you another one. So there's really a no-lose proposition here. And then using this tutorial, you can sharpen it right back up and shoot it. Have a great day. I'm the Ranch Ferry. Please subscribe if you'd like to. It's free country. You don't necessarily have to. And, uh, but you might learn something because my goal, as I said in the beginning, is to make you lethal, smarter, and teach you all the stuff that's not being talked about in the industry. And I'm telling you, sharpening broadheads is one of the most overlooked, if not the most overlooked thing right next to really how to get really great aero flight. Um, sharpening broadheads is not discussed. And it is completely irresponsible of you. This is not on the broadhead manufacturers. It is on you to be an adult and make sure that your broadheads are as sharp as possible. And that tool right there, the Precision Adjust, the Precision Adjust Elite, or the professional model back there with the fancy dancy, I've got a video on that on my channel. It's got an actual digital gauge that's really, really accurate. So for you guys that really, really wanna be super accurate, get the professional model. And then this one's been working great for me. So have a great day. And keep watching the ranch fray if you want to be lethal for bow hunting. Anyway, see you.